information gathering will go into different kinds mm. of yes. intelligence. That's, that's, you mm -hmm. have, you know, media intelligence, you have visual intelligence, you have impact. Um, there are devices now, if you sit in that chair and you leave the room 15 minutes, I can get your heat signature mm -hmm. on this one. Mm -hmm. $1,500 US for a small one and 5000 US for a big one. Right, yeah. And I could follow mm -hmm. you all the way downstairs mm -hmm. to your car, know where your car was parked long after you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's how we invest in it, how we train, how we develop, and how we deploy it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get into the specifics. We have covered the area of the service-oriented uh, police service, psychological testing, and uh, the you know the um, uh, what what was it called? Um, yeah, okay. And, and we've also dealt with firearms training and technology. Officers trained in the rights of citizens and the need to respect and protect those rights is the other question I'm going to ask you. Are they well schooled on what the industry calls, which you have taught about, winning? on the streets and prevailing in court because if you don't do the right thing on the street the court can throw it out or you don't have and i know a number of judges have um, um been um, frustrated by officers coming to court and not having done their due diligence how well uh, trained uh, our officers in the rights of citizens and the proper collection of information that they can in fact um win on the streets and prevail in court well that's a wide-ranging question but i'm not going to kind of break it down to the best of my knowledge. I had a discussion with a provost uh, not too long ago. Um, the whole concept of their training and development would be based upon professional recognition of the academy. And they're now going through that so that it becomes a recognized training um, domain. And as a result, some of the subject matter and the areas of development would be an ongoing thing. So, um, in, so in so doing, in my area of expertise, which is the whole question of use of force and, and, and defense work, the use of force policy um, is about to be implemented, and uh, it was tweaked over, and the Commissioner of Police will, will have that available probably before the end of the month. That was something long in the, in the making for the, for the police service mm. as a benchmark in which um, two things could happen the officers will be able to deal with challenges from a preferred point and a general open area of performance, which is in a policy and a model. Mm -hmm. And it will also speak to how they will be able to do recall, report writing, statements, evidence in court, and general comportment. Mm -hmm. um, Generally, and in a situation, they will be able to refer to the requirements of what the model set forth in uh, the, the appearance of a police officer in a situation, the way in which one speaks and mediation before it even escalates to the use of force or the possible um, even arrest because it gives the right for an officer to remove someone and escort them. And if the officer s does that, Long ago, they say an assault was a mere touching of a person or telling somebody you're under arrest and they're under arrest. Now it allows for an officer to remove a dissident person or someone with the propensity to cause further dissident behavior by others to just escort him and remove him. Mm. And that touching and that removal, um, if that person brings a cross charge against the officer, if he writes properly, proper report, proper statement, and give a reason why he had to escort this person and remove them from point A or point B, mm -hmm. then he has done his job based upon the support he gets from his, his use of force policy. So we're now putting the icing on the cake and making it um, a win-win situation, both for the public and for the police. And why I say win-win for the public, if an officer exceeds the expectation, he can now be... Um, as they say, pull over the coals for excessive use of force or willful application of the wrong methods in, in dealing with something because there would be um, standards that being required to, for that he or she adheres to performance. Um, and, and, and there's a reason why I ask you, and you did say it was a loaded question, and it was, because in looking through information on you, and there's a lot to read of you, I saw the area that you were, in fact, um, you have um, taught winning on the streets and, and, and prevailing in the courts. The area that I saw, I saw two things happening here. I saw them as two separate things, because winning on the street is exactly what you articulated, is exactly what I think communities are asking for. You can win on the street if you approach me properly. Yeah. You can win on the street if 
you treat me with respect. You can win on the streets if I feel I have confidence in saying something to you. You can win on the streets if you allow me, except where you are in a dangerous situation, if you allow me to explain myself. You can win on the streets that way. And, and, and many folks are here saying that is not what they get generally when they approach by a police officer. Now you understand why I started the discussion here this morning with the elements of training, because that to me is what works against the police. The police officer cannot be everywhere or see everything, so we know you're going to need us, the public, to be involved. But we must have confidence. One is that you that you you understand our rights. Two is that you respect us. Three is that you do not rush to judgment. Your your business is to deal with a situation, not to make a judgment on my innocence or, or, or guilt. You can say that I've done some things that lead you to suspect that, and then you take me to court and the court decides. Well, let me give you this story very briefly. Okay. Ironically, yesterday, um, the close friends of mine, uh, at, uh, after a funeral, uh, a large turnout at the home, and where they live, um, there was a construction job before, mm. so there are no parking signs and no entry signs left right where they were left. Apparently, because vehicles were parked and there was a congestion, two police officers, don't know where they came from, mm -hmm. arrived at the home, walking to the gate and asking who's in charge of the home. Somebody said, I'm in charge. They walked past that person who is rightfully in charge mm -hmm. and, and began to berate in front of everybody. Somebody else asking them, why only move the street sign and why you put a one way and a one entry and all that. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, um, and, and they were so sure that a member of that entourage with the people who put the, the no entry sign and mm. block the road for their own you know private mm -hmm. private concern Function, yes. mm. now the, the irony that I'm thinking about is when the death occurred at that house I was called and I got in contact mm. with the Sinclair police station and the inspector there um, in all his respect extended himself and had the, the officers go to the home and did certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So that there would be an expectation of cooperation and expectation of the culture that there would be a lot of people. Where these officers came from and their behavior, um, it was deplorable. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know what one wanted to prove or anything, but in no parking sign without evidence, without a camera, without somebody saying, well, that man or that, it, it, how could one assume mm -hmm. to a point where enter into a private residence and 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 did what they did now they mm -hmm. lost points and i'm seeing it they lost it's points not. in a community mm -hmm. that will normally be one that is very receptive to police and very kind in in their responses to to a number of things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so Winning on the street is not mm -hmm. only about violence. It's not about drawing a gun and shooting the guy exactly. down. It's mm -hmm. about good day, sir, good day, ma'am. Sir, your car parked badly here. Can you move mm -hmm. your car? And a number of civil type behavior that will get old people, young people, and other people sympathetic to you. So if something happens, somebody watching your back because you have already won your position mm -hmm. on the street. They now, to prevail mm -hmm. in court now will be the other side of it if and when something mm -hmm. happens. How do you articulate? How do you give the evidence? How do you address the court? How do you sound as though you're speaking the truth? Mm -hmm. Although sometimes I do not know really. is I do not know because I take officers to the range, tell them, I want you to load a magazine with 15 rounds, fire five rounds. And at the end, I smile. And at the end of the day, I say, count how many rounds in your magazine. Um, did you fire five? Yes, sir, I fired five. They take the magazine out, five from 15 leaves, 10. When they check the magazine, they only have five. I said, did you know you fired 10? Mm -hmm. No, sir. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if that is done on the range where preparation for behavior and response and you lost count mm -hmm. and you're not scared, nobody pull a gun at you, nobody's threatening to chop you, your life is not threatened, and you lost count in that kind of psychological moment in, in firing. Mm -hmm. You go before the court and you tell the, the judge, really, I did not know how many shots I fired. It was not my intention to fire five or six. It was my intention to stop the person who was threatening me because that is the purpose for which I'm trained. I'm not trained to kill anybody. I'm trained to stop someone with my firearm. You don't hear that. No matter how you look at it, winning on the street is a combination of all that you articulated earlier. We have to take the time that when folks feel they are treated with respect and they, they can talk to officers, uh, that is going to be one way of winning on the streets in addition to the works of the PBS and the PCA is yeah. very important. The Professional Bureau of Standards and the uh, Police Complaints Authority in hearing the complaints 
complaints of the of, of the citizenry is important. And just briefly, the area of having community liaison officers especially put aside. I've been talking to someone in Laverton, for instance, who spoke about at one point there was an approach to do something like this, and it didn't last because of the alleged hostility coming from the community. But that's precisely why you're going to have such a unit, isn't it? Well, I... I heard differently um, because two, two or three of the officers mm -hmm. who I was trained with, mm -hmm. my batch, um, retired now. And one of them, he's doing his own, his own thing. He's a, a he's an NGO, and um, he's back in 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 what you call the high risk areas mm -hmm. and well respected. And um, it, it had nothing to do with the the community not wanting them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe it, it, it was based a little bit sometimes how the community would see itself um, having to relate to the officers on the street where they may become suspect by other members of the community. Mm. But when you get past that and the agenda is not spying, but the agenda is to use the resources within the community for a good purpose mm -hmm. and you have a lawful intervention that will, mm. will inform, instruct, and direct then there's no way that program would fail. And you know, you were in New York, and you would, that, that inner city program, we got graffiti off the street, we got um, even people riding the trains, and so conformity to law, Getting back, and, yes. and, and, and it, it got back into, into hand. And that's why it is such a very important investment to have this community relations thing, to have this respect of, citizens, uh, of the citizenry, because it works. My guest this morning is Jerry Michael Goodridge, certified uh, international security and law enforcement training at Advisor. He's qualified in a number of areas articulated earlier. We have to get down to what's happening before us now. Vicious street crime in TNT. I want to go into that area. It's, it dominates, uh, it seems to be dominated, uh, from all evidence, by gangs. It terrifies the citizenry at, at large. I'm aware that there's no one off solution, no panacea uh, for this, but surely there has to be a more effective way to track, isolate, and if not squeeze the survivability out of a group, there must be something more we can do to frustrate them than for gangs to be operating with what seems to be impunity. I'm trying to understand what are you seeing that is not being done? Why we have this proliferation of violence so openly? And I, I look, look back just at Wednesday, and I look at two people shot in the streets. And, 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 and I'm saying, look, you can't stop it because, you know, evil is all over the place. But for goodness sakes, if an area, Shigwana says one such area, um, and, and, and you know the criminality is happening there, is there something wrong with having elevated mobile police units, uh, boots put up, uh, supported by ground units, to squeeze, to control, to corral this um, illegality? Well, I, I will go back a little bit further than that. If we look at what is happening in the primary schools and we look at the herding, I call it the herding that's going on, you have classes where a teacher would come to school and have to deal with 40 students, 35, 30 students in a classroom. One does not even monitor behavior. One looks at whether you did your homework or you could work on the, in, the, in the class. And, and, and then for most times, that is as far as the teacher can go because the potential to do anything else is limited. Then student behavior. Then it is not supported in a positive way by parents. Some parents actually seem to encourage their children in, in, in a particular type of behavior. So if it starts at that level in the primary school and it gets to the secondary school, obviously there may not be uh, a, a, a what we call a, a gang as far as recognized and registered in the gangsterism world. But like begets like. Like begets like. And the student who wants to do work in that environment and do best, they are frustrated, peer frustrated this, yes. and, and, and peer pressure and all of that. So you already have this runaway group of behavior. When they get outside there, there's no way in which you can monitor a school child. 